acting, yes, a little bit, but less now due to the fact that I'm very busy with my foundation, the Fabian Colas Foundation, um, dedicated to supporting education in the arts as well as diversity on screen. And then we do five festivals a year, the Montreal Black Film Festival, the Toronto Black Film Festival, Haiti en Folie in Montreal. And we also have Fade to Black that we also do in Montreal, as well as the Quebec Film Festival in Haiti. So we're very busy with uh, trying to provide um, you know, diversity on screen and then um, giving artists a voice that I don't really take the time for myself to go and act in anything so much as as much as before but I'm, I'm still a director and an actress. I would say I'm proud of the work of the foundation as a whole. The Fabian Colas Foundation has a strong board of directors and a great team um, that has have allowed us to go way further than my imagination would have ever gone. I would never envision it that big and resonated with that many resonated with that many people and having such a strong impact throughout Canada and abroad. So um, I'm really proud of the work of the team at the Family Class Foundation and our board of directors. They're working very hard to make sure that we're you know we we we're in, we're in we keep doing what we need to do and go get the resources and everything. So I'm proud of the whole thing, not just one. The most exciting part of my job is that it's not boring. It's not boring, there's nothing routine about it. Um, I, can, I can have a week where um, every day at the Carlton Cinema and at the Isabel Bader Theater and then at the, the, the uh, Art Gallery of Ontario showing film, you know. I'm welcoming Alfie Woodard and paying tribute to her and uh, welcoming thousands and thousands of Torontonians and all the people coming from elsewhere um, to attend um, the Toronto Black Film Festival. I can be um, another week doing all kind of the same thing, uh, welcoming Harry Belafonte and Spike Lee in Montreal for the Montreal Black Film Festival. And then I can be um, as well in, during the summer in Montreal welcoming Wyclef Jean. Uh, and I can also spend a couple of weeks sitting in front of my computer and working and then emailing and then um, you know reviewing projects and then um, you know so so there's no two weeks that are the same the best part of my job is meeting the people meeting people my dream if I can say for the Toronto Black Film Festival is that it becomes one of the most known solid, powerful festival, black film festivals in the world that people come to Toronto at the Toronto Black Film Festival. Toronto is the city of film. That people come to the Toronto Black Film Festival to make deals happen, to get um, workshop, master classes, meet other people and they know that they will not come here empty ended. So this is what we would like um, that happen for the festival. First, I would say People tend to say, oh, I don't have the resources, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, that's why I haven't started, I don't have this, I don't have this. When I started, um, 12 years ago, we started the Montreal Black Film Festival, um, and then four years ago, this one, the Toronto Black Film Festival, I never contemplated the extent of what I did not have, like uh, the vast majority of things that I would need. I'm like, well, I want to make this, it's, for, it's up to me to figure out how I'm gonna be doing it. And there's something I do, I don't, I don't say that everybody should do that like that, but that's my way. One thing I always do is, when I wanna launch something big, and, um, and it's a step, you know, it's not easy, it's not, I don't know how I'm gonna be getting there, I like to share it. I like to say, well guys, I'm preparing uh, this and then uh, for next year and everything. And then I don't like to talk about projects that are too, too um, that, that, that are not clear in my head. I have to make sure I want to do that and then I know I'm gonna do it and this is the time frame I'm gonna do it first before I say that. But once it's clear, I say that. Now, now that I say that, I cannot back off again. So um, I would say to anybody that has projects, whatever it is, big or small, I think those projects can have an impact on society, on their communities. Um, just go and do it. Don't wait for anybody to give you permission. Nobody will give you permission. Nobody will um, 
Don't wait for money from, you know, from me. If I was waiting for money to do anything, I wouldn't have done anything since the get-go. You have to start with the resources you have now. Start as little as you can with what you have now. Even if it's 10 bucks, you start with that. And then people will see your passion. People will see your energy and what we're trying to do. And, and if it makes sense, if, and if it resonates, other people will get involved and say, you know what, next year, I'll help you. I'll get involved. I'll help you get sponsors. I'll help you do this because your thing is valuable. But if you don't start anything and you think people are just going to stay there and say, oh, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm going to get you started. It's not going to happen. People don't get on a train that is not going anywhere. You have to show that you are on a bus that is running, that is going, and then everybody should get on the bus with you. For that, you have to start. So get in the game. We need... Um, it, we need more money at the Fabian Class Foundation to um, put together more grants because we give some grants um, for education, for disadvantaged um, upcoming filmmakers or young students and for mentorship as well, for training and then for them to go to, to school, not to, to, to art school. And uh, we would definitely need more money to raise, you know, to increase those grants so we can have more money to give away. That is definitely um, one aspect that I will be focusing on for the upcoming years because we need to change more lives. We need to impact more lives. There's an emergency in the, um, our, our communities to showcase diversity on screen. And if you don't have anybody of color, um, you know, becoming filmmakers, becoming producers and directors and screenwriters. I mean, we will not get there. We, you, you, you understand what I mean? We cannot count on other, others only to tell our stories. Yes, they should include us in the stories because we're part of society. And we should include them as well be, because we are one society. There's no them and us the way I'm trying to make you understand. Um, we should be all one working all together. But in order for that to happen, we also need to tell our own stories as well. We also need to be writing, to be creating just as Shonda Rhimes. Because Shonda Rhimes exists, now you can have a lead female on primetime television that are black people. Huh? And that has not, not been done before. You would have uh, put everybody there and say, do you think something called, called, called scandal or how to get away with murder, I'm with a female lead on primetime television, black, would you think that would work? Everybody would say no. But you have to be gutsy and, and do this. And because she is a woman of color, because she's a powerful woman behind television, I mean, she could, you know, help make that change. But in order to have more Shonda Rhimes, we need to start, um, train more up and coming filmmakers and writers and, you know, of color so that, you know, the, the industry has a lot to choose from, you know what I mean? So um, this is what we're focusing on. I'm um, really the next generation of incoming filmmakers. We need more money to spend on that. Um, anything related to that, yes. And then, of course, money to strengthen up our platforms so the, our festivals can really be um, more solid and established. And then so the city, the cities in which they are, can be proud of them. And, um, what next for the Fabian Class Foundation? I hope um, we will get this phone call from um, more, you know, from more donors um, that would say, you know what? Okay, we're gonna set up this fund that you don't have to worry anymore about other up-and-coming filmmakers from disadvantaged communities, up-and-coming youth that needs the training that can't afford them, um, so that you guys can help you know, find them and train them and then send them to school and then um, give them those grants that they need and everything. I hope we're going to get this phone call from those owners and we're going to help us do that and say, don't worry, for the next 20 years, you know, this fund is there just so we can do that. Um, that would drastically change um, the, the, the communities that we're serving, that's for sure. And not just in Montreal, not just in Toronto, we want to do that throughout Canada. Um, and you... You might be of any color. It's just a skin shade. You know, we're part of the same race, the human race. And when one person is not being complete, when one person is not 
um, achieving, it affects all of us. My passion, my devotion in, in my life, that's what I want to do. Go get the money where it is and then help people that cannot go themselves. You know, and uh, we will do that with the power of the arts. So we would we want to leverage the power of the arts to change our communities, to impact them in a good way, and then to make a difference. Thank you. Very You're welcome. Much. You're welcome.